Hi. Now what I've got here is a great question to try because it brings out lots of features and especially this last part, Part E, uh, the distance travelled by a particle, uh, is quite challenging. So definitely recommend that you have a go at this question. So what we've got here though is a particle moves from a fixed point O. The velocity v of the particle at time t seconds is given by v equals 3t minus 2 times by t minus 4. And s equals 8 meters when t equals 1 second. And we've got to find the initial velocity of the particle, the acceleration of the particle when t equals 3 seconds, the values of t when the particle is at rest, the distance the particle is from o when t is 2 seconds, and the distance travel when t is 2 seconds. So if you'd like to have a go at that, It'd be really good. Okay, well, let's just see how you got on if you did have a go, and we'll start with part A. Now, first of all, then we've got to find the initial velocity of the particle. So the initial velocity would be when t is zero. So that's going to be quite straightforward. All we need to do is then substitute when t equals zero into our equation here for v. So the first bracket would be just simply minus 2 and the second bracket would be minus 4. So it's going to be that v equals minus 2 times minus 4, which clearly is equal to 8. 8 meters per second. Okay, move on to part b now. And in part b we've got to get the acceleration of the particle when t equals 3 seconds. So to get acceleration, we need to differentiate velocity with respect to time, dv dt. But before we can do that, we need to expand v out. So let's just expand the brackets and we get 3t squared. And then you get minus 12t minus another 2t, so that's minus 14t. And then you end up with minus 2 times minus 4, which is plus 8. So to get that acceleration then, A, we need to differentiate the velocity with respect to time, the rate of change of velocity then. And if you do that, you'll end up with that equaling 6t minus 14. Okay, so we've got a formula for the acceleration in terms of t. So that's going to be fairly straightforward now. We need to know the acceleration when t equals 3 seconds. So when t equals 3, we have that a equals 6 times 3 is 18, minus 14 is just going to leave you with 4 meters per second per second. Now for the next part, part c then, let's just put it in here, the values of t when the particle is at rest. So when the particle is at rest, the velocity will be zero. So we can say that when v equals zero, we're going to have, just put down here, that that velocity zero will equal 3t minus 2 times t minus 4. So 3t minus 2 times t minus 4. Simple equation to solve. It means that each of these two factors would either be zero, so that means that therefore 3t minus 2 could equal zero or the factor t minus 4 equals zero. If you solve this one for t, you're going to get t equals two thirds, two thirds seconds, or this one if you add four to both sides, t equals four seconds. So the particle is stationary then after two thirds of a second and four seconds. It comes to what we call instantaneous rest. Okay, let's move on to part D now. So in part D, the distance the particle is from O when T is 2 seconds. Now to get distance, well, to get displacement, we should say, S, we need to integrate velocity with respect to time. So if we take the expanded version of velocity, 
here we are up here 3t squared minus 14t plus 8. We can say that s is the integral of that velocity 3t squared minus 14t plus 8 with respect to time. We integrate with respect to time. And if we do that in the usual way, just add 1 to the power and divide by the new power, we end up with t cubed, then we get minus 7t squared, and then plus 8t. And don't forget, you need a constant of integration, which I'm going to call plus c. It's very easy to forget that in questions like this. So we've got to work out what that constant of integration is. So to do that, we need some boundary conditions. And we've got them up here. We know that s is equals 8 meters when t equals 1 second. So we can put that in. We can say that when s equals 8, t equals 1. And if we substitute this into here, we therefore have 8 equals, and put the 1 in here, you're going to get 1 minus 7 plus 8 plus c. So we've got the 1 and 8 is 9, 9 takes 7 is 2, take 2 from both sides and you get 6 equals c or c equals 6. So that means then that we can now update our equation for the displacement s. So therefore s equals t cubed minus 7t squared plus 8t and then plus that c value which we've now found out to be 6. So we can answer the question then the distance the particle is from O when t equals 2. So when t equals 2 all we need to do is just substitute it into this equation. So when t equals 2 s turns out to be 2 cubed which is 8 minus 7 falls 28 plus 16 plus 6 and that comes out at 2 meters. Okay now I did say earlier that E is the challenging part here. In part E we've got to find out how far it went during those two seconds, the distance traveled. Now to do something like this, to appreciate this I feel you should draw a diagram. So we've got some room up here. It'll have to be squeezed in here, but uh, if we can just do something up here. Okay, let's go back to the beginning. Let's go back to the beginning and think what has actually happened. We've got our fixed point O. So let's say we have O here. Now We've seen that in the earlier questions, when t was naught, the velocity was 8 meters per second. We need a plus direction in this problem, so let's just set up a plus direction, say, to the right. So when t is naught, it's moving to the right at 8 meters per second. But we can't assume that it started from here, O. Oh. Where it started would be given by the displacement equation. So if we were to substitute when t is naught into here, do you see that you'll get 6? So the particle starts 6 meters to the right of O. So let's just put our particle in here. And we'll mark in that this distance here is 6 meters. Okay. And it was at this point when t was 0. So put t equals 0 there. And it was moving to the right at 8 meters per second initially, so 8 meters per second in there. As I say, we're just going to have to squeeze this in, so do bear with me on this. Now, what happens next? Well, we've seen that it comes to instantaneous rest after two-thirds of a second. So where is it after two-thirds of a second? Well, what we would need to do is substitute two-thirds, t equals two-thirds of a second, into our displacement equation. 
Well, if you do that, okay, you can check it out on your calculator, it comes out to exactly 230 over 27, okay, meters. Not a very nice number if you wrote it as a decimal, so I would leave it as 230 over 27 meters. That's just a little over 8 meters. So the particle then has gone from here, but its displacement is just over 8 meters. That's measured from O. So if we were to mark that in like so down here, it's not drawn to scale, but let's just squeeze that in there. It's 230 over 27 meters. Okay. Let's put the particle here. And this is when t was equal to two thirds of a second. It came to instantaneous rest. Let's have a look at the acceleration when t equals two thirds. When t equals two thirds, if you put it in here, 6 times 2 thirds gives you 4. 4 take away 14 is minus 10. So it was decelerating, okay? It was slowing down. The acceleration, though, is minus 10 meters per second per second. So it slows down, comes to instantaneous rest. Now, in the next few seconds, it's going to start to move towards the left. And you can easily see that. If, I mean, if you put, say, t equals 1 into the velocity equation. Where is it? Here we are. We can go up here. If t was 1, you're going to get 3 minus 2, which is 1, and 1 take away 4 is minus 3. So after one second, this is moving with a velocity of minus 3 meters per second. So that means it's moving to the left at 3 meters per second. So you can see it goes out and then starts to turn back. So this is the bit where you've got to be careful. So how far did it travel after two seconds? Well, we know that after two seconds, it's now got a positive displacement of two meters from O. So if we mark that in here, let's just see, we can squeeze it in up the top here. This distance here, let's say, is two meters. And that is when t equals two. Let's see if we can just squeeze t equals 2 up there. Our particle then is just here. So how far has it travelled during those two seconds? Well, it's clearly gone from its initial point here. It's gone out to there and then come all the way back down to here. So all we've got to do is work out this distance, which will be... Well, let's just let's just start the intro here. We can say the total distance equals. So we've got this distance, which is going to be 230 over 27 minus 6. Let's just write that in. 230 over 27 minus 6. So it went out that distance, but then it came back. So we've got to double that and then just add on this distance which is going to be 4 meters because we've got the 2 meters from O and 6 meters here. So we just need to plus 4. And if you do that on your calculator, you end up with the exact value of 244 over 27 and that will be measured in meters. So a bit of a tricky question towards the end, but one that uh, I hope that uh, you've managed to uh, understand or get. Okay. So uh, that brings us now to the end of this question. I hope you did find that one uh, useful.